Hi, in this session, I'm going to discuss about uh, how to classify Iris data set and uh, implement in TensorFlow. Iris data set has been there uh, since 1936. It has been uh, given by Fisher. It is the popular uh, machine learning uh, data classification data set. And uh, this is the very first classification problem I solved and it was really exciting for me. And uh, so, First, I'll uh, discuss about the data set, followed by the math, and uh, finally, how to implement in TensorFlow step by step. So, let's get started. Iris data set contains uh, three species, namely Iris versicolor, Iris virginica, Iris setosa. And uh, the input, uh, the data actually contains uh, four attributes, namely the septal length, the septal width, petal length, and petal width, all in centimeters and uh, the output class contains uh, uh, the three different species. Let's sketch our model first. We have four different uh, inputs and uh, three different outputs corresponding to different uh, species and the uh, inputs corresponding to different attributes. And uh, since uh, it's a multi-class problem, multi-class uh, classification problem, uh, we are going to use softmax. Softmax comes in very handy in these situations. Softmax function basically returns the exponential of one particular input uh, divided by sum of exponential of all the inputs. Um, all the, inputs. Uh, the best part of softmax function is uh, it returns uh, the output in terms of probabilities and uh, it's very useful uh, in case of classification problem to be more precise multi-class classification problem like in our case. So for example, we have three inputs. Uh, the output will somewhat look like this. Uh, let's say for example case 0 0.7, 0 0.2 and 0 0.1 all adds to 1. So it's uh, really handy and useful in classification problems. In case of classification problems, we use a special type of loss function called the cross entropy function. What uh, cross entropy does is uh, try to find the negative likelihood of the log of the predicted value. So this is the cross entropy function. It's basically the summation of the uh, true predicted value, true value multiplied by the log of the predicted value. This predicted value is nothing but the output from our softmax function and uh, this uh, uh, function as a whole finds the negative likelihood of the log. So what it means is like uh, in essence in uh, machine learning algorithms we try to uh, uh, frame a loss function and try to minimize with the gradients. In this case we want to uh, uh, maximize the likelihood of a uh, predicted value which is nothing but y with uh, to that of the actual label which is this particular y minus this is the true label so we want to increase the likelihood of the predicted label to that of the true label so how do we go about it so the trick here is uh, maximizing one particular function this uh, can also be said as minimizing the negative of the same function. So here we take uh, uh, multiply with uh, minus sign and we try to minimize this function as with the regular case with any uh, loss function in a normal machine learning algorithm. And then uh, this will be our loss function. And uh, this particular true label will be some kind of uh, uh, vector with uh, one particular label true which is the true class and the uh, rest will be zero. Now that we understand our data and uh, we have framed our model, let's uh, go on and uh, start coding in TensorFlow. Using my IPython notebook uh, to code. So first things first, I import all the desired packages, uh, TensorFlow, NumPy, Pandas2, Radar data seaborn and matplotlib uh, to uh, visualize our data. I've already downloaded the iris data from online uh, so you can also download it uh, to your document uh, desktop and uh, also there is a python uh, function uh, to import uh, to directly download from the web page uh, given the URL. 
So I have taken this from the machine learning UCI machine learning repository. You can easily find it in Google. So after you download, uh, uh, use uh, read CSV file uh, function from the pandas to uh, import our data. And uh, for convenience sake, I have set the name of the columns to be uh, F1, F2, F3, F4, and F5. Uh, F1 to F4 corresponds to septal length, width, the petal length, and width, and F5 uh, has the species name. So uh, let's see our data. So this is the raw form of our data. This are the four features and uh, this is the species name you can see. So let's see the distribution. So it's evenly distributed 50, 50, uh, 15 each species. And uh, let's uh, try to visualize uh, with uh, just two features. So this is a visualization with just two features. Uh, so here uh, you can clearly see that iris setosa is uh, clearly classifiable uh, from the other two uh, species but the other two species are inseparable so we need a powerful algorithm to classify all these three species we need to convert a species name into useful vectors basically this is the label vectors uh, one corresponds to one at this position corresponds to one particular species and uh, zero and uh, here it corresponds to different species so we need to convert this first uh, in order to make uh, our data useful i'm gonna create three arrays uh, one zero 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 one zero and uh, zero zero one and then i'm gonna map uh, these arrays to the species name so the my fi column contains the species name and i'm gonna map this with uh, the respective uh, species names these arrays so let's have a look how our data looks now so you see now like our data is more useful now all the features and uh, the class which contains the labels uh, belonging to one particular class as you might have noticed uh, our data first contains uh, first 50 values of the first species followed by the 50 values of the next species and uh, finally the third one but uh, this would prove highly uh, inefficient uh, if we uh, have to like split our data into training and test data so what we have to do is first shuffle the data and then uh, split it uh, data for training and testing so let's go and do it I'm going to uh, shuffle my data. Let's have a look how our data looks. No? So now our data is shuffled. So I, instead of like one single uh, uh, species going on, like we see multiple species next together. But uh, one thing which is missing is the index. So the index is not. Uh, uh, this index corresponds to our unshuffled uh, data but after shuffling we need to put the index uh, in uh, chronological order we see the index are in, not arranged in uh, ascending order because uh, this creates a problem because when you try to access uh, the fifth row uh, so it will instead of uh, 5 if you give 50 only it will be able to access this particular uh, data set so we need to uh, index it properly so reset uh, our index let's see now our data looks perfectly fine our next step is to uh, split our uh, uh, data into uh, training and test data you can uh, split according to your wish so moving on uh, with our tensorflow attributes uh, first uh, uh, define your placeholders so we have uh, four inputs 
four different features and uh, three outputs so my x is gonna contain four and uh, y is gonna be three and because uh, you can fit in as much data so i'm gonna keep this as none and uh, declare your weights and bias so my weight is gonna connect uh, my four inputs uh, to the three outputs and uh, bias is gonna be three and uh, let me go and run it first and uh, my model as discussed is going to be a softmax model i need to uh, multiply my input vector with the weights and add bias to it cross entropy function is going to be uh, uh, the logarithm multiplied by the correct uh, true label and I'm going to multiply negative and I'm going to sum this and uh, I'm going to take the mean of the sum which is nothing but a cross entropy and uh, next uh, auto optimizer I'm using uh, adaptive optimizer ADAM okay, so I'm going to minimize my loss cross entropy and uh, for predicting how much of my uh, predicted value is true with the uh, true label and uh, the accuracy will be the mean of uh, how many are true uh, uh, how many of are actually true true positive and false uh, negative okay uh, starting with the session since i'm in uh, IPython notebook, I have uh, initiated a interactive session. I'm going to initialize all my variables and uh, given uh, 2000 uh, iterations. Moving on with my for loop for each and every iteration, I'm going to uh, print the loss for every 500 steps and uh, run my uh, optimizer i'm going to uh, feed in my input data so here if you notice when you are running uh, uh, sending y uh, directly it will, will be it won't be as a matrix so what will be it's like a row vector and each and every row might have three so the dimensions of y input will be like uh, depending say 106 comma 1 but uh, we need uh, in terms of three different uh, matrices uh, three uh, row vector also so uh, send it as a matrix right i'm gonna run my algorithm now so you see my loss is reduced uh, now what I'm going to do is take some random value just for my uh, sake and uh, see how it works. So this I'm going to take uh, whatever is at uh, 130 and uh, the predicted output uh, will be the maximum of the output argument of y. I'm going to feed uh, this particular uh, value to my uh, to my session and uh, find out so it's uh, basically it's the index the argument returns the index 0 1 2 so that uh, at 130 is iris version so the final part accuracy of our algorithm so it's 97% uh, it's uh, really nice for this particular small data set I hope this was uh, useful for you guys and uh, I'm also uh, giving uh, lectures on deep learning uh, mastering deep learning with tensorflow uh, so please do subscribe for my channel and uh, in the other sessions i am uh, planning to parallelly uh, give some quick sessions on how to run particular problem set like uh, cifa uh, 10 or uh, mnsit so these problems uh, 
I'm thinking of uh, having a separate uh, series uh, to implement uh, discussion implement uh, in tensorflow and i hope you guys enjoy thank you